Hey folks, if your photos library has exploded in file size, then keep watching because today I'm gonna to teach you a really simple workflow that will dramatically shrink the size of your library in a matter of minutes. And best of all, no third-party apps required. That's coming up next on Tech Talk America. The workflow that I'm about to teach you will help you find a few different types of files that take up a ton of space in iCloud. We're then going to exclusively target the photos and videos that you have not identified as favorites. So if you already use the favorites feature in photos, this is going to be super simple for you. We're then going to take the images that you don't care about quite so much, and we're going to export them as high resolution JPEGs, which will ultimately replace the raw and pro res versions. If you're following along at home, open up the photos app and then go to the file menu at the top left. Now let's create a new smart album. I'm going to name this smart album raw to JPEG. The first rule that we're going to create goes like this. Photo is not favorite. Now let's add a second rule and just make sure that up here it says match all conditions. The second rule is photo is raw. Now press OK. At this point, you'll want to go through these images and just make sure that there isn't anything that is not marked as a favorite that should be. If you do favorite an image, you will see it disappear from this list because of the rule we just created. This next step is really important that you follow along in the exact same order in order to make sure that all metadata from these photos will be preserved. We'll now use the keyboard shortcut Command A to select all of these photos, then use keyboard shortcut Command Shift E as in Edward to export. I recommend that you set photo kind to JPEG, JPEG quality to maximum, color profile to original, size to full, and make sure that it does include titles, keywords, captions, as well as location information. We now need to save all of this to a folder on your computer, so let's go into the pictures folder, create a new folder, and save everything there. At this point, we have two options. You can either delete all of the raw versions of your photos that we just exported, or if you have an external hard drive, you might want to export a copy of them in raw format so that you can retrieve them later on down the road. By the way, if you haven't watched it, make sure you check out my video on how to create an emergency backup of your entire photos library. So now that we've cleared off all of the raw versions of these images, let's go into file and then go to import. Now I will direct it to my folder of high resolution JPEGs. If photos suggest that some of the images were already imported, just ignore the warning and tell it to import all of them anyway. If at this point, any of those photos were in albums, you will need to put them back into those albums. Now this might sound a little bit tedious, but it's a lot easier if you go into the imports album since all of those new images will be grouped together. When it comes to using this workflow on videos, it's very similar. Now we're going to duplicate the smart album that we just created by highlighting it and pressing Command D on your keyboard, or you can secondary click. Now let's secondary click on the album and select Edit Smart Album. At this point, depending on what type of video content you have in your library, all you have to do is change this part of the second rule so that instead of raw, we can set it to something like ProRes, cinematic mode, or you can just set it to show all videos. For this example, I've loaded my demo account with a ProRes video clip that I shot on my iPhone 14 Pro. Just to give you an idea of how much space this content takes up, this five second shot just by itself is half a gigabyte. We now go through the exact same process as before, except instead of exporting it as a high resolution JPEG, we can convert it to standard 4K or 1080p. Just to prove a point, even if I keep the resolution at 4K, this file, which was half a gigabyte a moment ago, now only takes up 19 megabytes. How does it look? Well, take a look for yourself. This is the clip in ProRes, and here is the same clip in standard 4K. While I'm sure some of you with well-trained eyes might be able to tell a subtle difference, I think you'll agree it's pretty darn subtle, especially when you consider the fact that it takes up 97% less space. If you enjoyed this tutorial and would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, be sure to visit my website at techtalkamerica.com and sign up for a one-hour tech therapy session. Heads up, I will be gone for the entire month of January on my honeymoon. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America.
Class dismissed. <laughs>